These fallen angels are already on Earth, and the government knows about it. Not just that, but the government are actually on these fallen angels' side. This is all prophesied in the Bible. The Bible warns us that when these fallen angels are released, something terrible will happen. The Euphrates River begins in the Armenian highlands of eastern Turkey, where the Karasu River and the Murat River join. The river runs through the Taurus Mountains, then across Syria and Iraq before emptying into the Persian Gulf. The river is 1,730 miles long, making it the longest waterway in southwestern Asia. But why is this important? Well, because this is where four of the deadliest fallen angels are said to be, just waiting to be freed. This is so they can fulfill their mission. The Bible says in Revelation 9 verses 13 to 14, the sixth angel sounded his trumpet, and I heard a voice coming from the four horns of the golden altar that is before God. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. Now for those not too familiar with the Bible, there are seven trumpets before the apocalypse. These fallen angels being released is the sixth trumpet, and it is happening as we speak. The Bible warns us how when the Euphrates River dries up, that the apocalypse is near. This is because four fallen angels will be released from the bottom of this river to eradicate one-third of mankind. That is approximately two billion people that will fall victim to these fallen angels when they are released. And sure enough, the Euphrates River is drying up as we speak. Actually, the river is drying up so quickly that the Iraqi Ministry of Water Resources warns that the river could be completely dry by 2040. That's only 16 years from the point of me making this video. But why will this happen? Or a better question, why would God allow this to happen? Well, as I mentioned, this is the sixth trumpet out of seven. The seven trumpets of Revelation is talked about from Revelation 8 to 9. It all starts off when seven angels stand before God and then they receive seven trumpets. The first angel sounded his trumpet. And there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down on the earth. A third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. The second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain, all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood, a third of the living creatures in the sea perished, and a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people passed away from the waters that had become bitter. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. And out of the smoke, locusts came down on the earth and were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not allowed to take their lives. They were only allowed to torment them for five months, and the agony they suffered was like that of the sting of a scorpion when it strikes. During those days, people will seek death but will not find it. The locusts looked like horses prepared for battle. On their heads, they wore something like crowns of gold, and their faces resembled human faces. Their hair was like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. 
They had tails with stingers like scorpions, and in their tails they had power to torment people for five months. They had as king over them the angel of the abyss whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek is Apollyon, that is, destroyer. Since we already discussed the sixth trumpet, I will jump right into what the seventh trumpet will bring. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who were seated on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. The nations were angry and your wrath has come. The time has come for judging the dead and for rewarding your servants the prophets and your people who revere your name, both great and small, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and within his temple was seen the ark of his covenant, and there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake and a severe hailstorm. The Euphrates River angels are shrouded in mystery. The Bible doesn't reveal their names. All we know about them is that they will be freed when the Euphrates River is completely dry and all hell will break loose. Although shrouded in mystery, they match up with four mysterious biblical figures known as the Four Horsemen, similar to the Four Euphrates Angels. The Four Horsemen are also a telltale sign that the apocalypse is nearing. The white horse of the apocalypse represents religious deception. The red horse of the apocalypse represents wars. The black horse of the apocalypse represents famines. The pale horse of the apocalypse represents pestilence, disease epidemics and pandemics, and death. And according to what these horsemen represent, it seems as though the apocalypse is already beginning. The Bible mentions how the governments of the world will actually be on the side of these angels, as well as the devil himself and a host of other demonic beings. These powerful nations mentioned are referred to as the kings of the East. The Bible then goes on to say this about these kings of the East. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the East. And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits like frogs. For they are demonic spirits, performing signs, who go abroad to the kings of the whole world to assemble them for battle on the great day of God the Almighty. This verse is telling us there will be a final war between good and evil. Revelation 16:16 16, 16 says, the demonic spirits gathered all the rulers and their armies to a place with the Hebrew name Armageddon. Armageddon is actually a real place. Armageddon, which means Mount Megiddo, is where the final battle between good and evil will be fought. There is a real-world site at Biblical Megiddo in northern Israel. This is a war that the forces of evil believe they will win. They actually believe they will defeat God. The Bible named this war the Battle of Armageddon, in this final battle between good and evil, Jesus Christ himself will come down from heaven to battle between the evil forces within the earth, but he won't be alone. Those marked with the name of the Lord on their foreheads will also be a part of this epic battle, including me and you. Those who have received the mark of the beast will be fighting on the opposite side. This war will have a gruesome end according to the Bible, an end where the forces of evil will be defeated. After the battle of Armageddon is won, the earth will be cleansed of all evil marking the beginning of the Israelites' thousand-year reign with Christ. This thousand-year period will be in a place known as the New Jerusalem. Words can't even begin to describe the beauty of this wonderful place. New Jerusalem, which is also called the Tabernacle of God, the Holy City, the City of God, the Celestial City, the City Foursquare, and Heavenly Jerusalem, is literally heaven on earth. It is referred to in the Bible in several places. Galatians 4.26, Hebrews 11.10 to chapter 12, verses 22 to 24, 
and chapter 13 to verse 14, but it is most fully described in Revelation 21. This is what we know about the New Jerusalem. It will literally be a physical city that descends from heaven, there won't be any sickness, and humans will be completely immortal. To understand this more, let's look at Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Verse 9 then tells us exactly what this heavenly place will look like in great detail. It says, One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates and with twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. This is the eternal reward for the righteous. Although the righteous reward will be amazing, the unrighteous will be experiencing what is known as the second death. This place consists of unimaginable suffering. In the Bible's own words, we're told the unrighteous will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. This is an obvious interpretation of hell, consisting the very well-known lake of fire. However, not only humans will be there, the fallen angels and Satan will be there. Oddly enough, Satan will once again be freed. The Bible tells us that Satan will be in hell for 1,000 years. Then he will be released again for an unknown reason, although it will just be a short period of time when he's released. It still is odd that the worst figure in the Bible will be released once more. Revelation 20 explains this saying, He sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil, or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him, to keep him from deceiving the nations any more until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. As to why he will be freed, and what he will do when he is freed. Well, we will never know. For everyone watching, I am doing multiple giveaways where I'm giving out the Book of Enoch to several viewers. Five lucky winners already won a Book of Enoch, but there will be seven more winners. To get a chance to win your own personal Book of Enoch, subscribe, share this video, and comment done. I will announce the new winners on the 21st of this month, I would also encourage you to turn on my post notifications so you know if you won or not. Also, when we reach 200,000 subscribers, I'll do an even bigger giveaway where I'll give out 20 more books. We're very close to that milestone. This is all coming out of my very own pocket just to show you all how grateful I am for the amazing support.